guys doing? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Uh, welcome to my zoysia. I know you're probably wondering about that thing. I'll have a video coming up on that, I don't know, sometime in the next couple weeks. I gotta use it and abuse it a little bit first, but uh, yeah, working on uh, recovering the zoysia here. You can't see it from this low angle, but but uh, taking it through the struggle, that's what this video is about, really. Well, sorta. I'm gonna take you through those struggles, but during those struggles and through those struggles, I actually learned some things. I should say I confirmed some things that I already knew about my zoysia, and uh, I'm gonna share those with you today. And uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have to do a little spraying and praying. Got a new uh, new sprayer, a four sun sprayer, and I'm gonna break that out and uh, yeah, do what I can do. So hopefully you'll enjoy this video all about the zoysia and uh, the not leveling that me and the lawn tools did. So with that, let's go ahead and start back about a little over a month ago. Hey, what's up y'all? All right, well today is, well is it leveling day? lawn flattening day, taking the bumps out of the lawn day. I don't know, the idea is is that I've got some low spots in here and I need to get this generally smoothly sloped. I guess that's the best way to say it. You want your lawn generally smoothly sloped. You definitely don't want it level because then water won't drain off of it. You want it to slope. And that's what we're doing today is we're filling in some low spots that are in the middle of the lawn here that not only affect my comfort in using the lawn, but they also affect the way that I can mow it. Now I'm gonna try not to keep this too complicated here because I got some special guests coming to do almost all of the work. But for the most part, properties have what's called a swale in between them. And I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of slopes right there. That's how most subdivisions are done. And that's where water is supposed to drain out of. But for me, I actually have some low spots right in through here. This area right here is very low. And so what happens is the water actually ends up draining here and then it comes over here and it goes across my driveway and it disturbs my pavers. Now the other reason I wanna fix it is because when I mow, it actually ends up scalping some spots. And we're not gonna go into that too much today, but basically if you have an area that's low and your mower blade comes across it, when your mower blade hits the low spot, it actually makes a higher cut. And when your lower blade hits the high spot, it actually makes a lower cut and that can scalp it. And this is zoysia and I've been mowing this really tall. You can see it looks awesome right now, but really it shouldn't be mowed this tall. This is three and a half inches. This really should be mowed down below two inches. But again, I can't do that when I've got these uneven spots in there because whenever I hit a high spot, it scalps. I don't know if you can tell, but you're actually in a low spot right there. Let me just kind of see if I can illustrate it because I'll try to do video because this is definitely something you can see visually. But So I can see the low spots here in person, but the camera always doesn't work that way. Just like the camera makes the grass look greener than it is, it's green, but it isn't this green. <laughs> That's just the GoPro. But uh, anyway, it uh, I can use this pole here, I think, and kind of illustrate. So see there, where is that? Like three and a quarter? Something like that, three, yeah, three and a half, just like I said, three and a half. And then you come over here and look at that, four and a half, four and three quarter even. And that's because that's the middle of a low spot. So you can imagine if you mow and you hit this, especially if you have a wider decked mower, this section's higher than that. So the wheel actually goes down in there and that dip there and it actually can cause a scalp. Now I've been mowing this with a smaller 21 inch mower, so I don't have that issue. But for those of you that may want to go real low, which you can do with zoysia. And at this time, I don't have any plans to go real low. But if you did want to go real low, this is another important factor because a real mower, when you're cutting at five eighths inch or even you know three quarter inch, will definitely show these dips. But for me, the main reason that I'm trying to get this done is I want the drainage to be right. People always want to know what's the best sand to get for leveling low spots. And the answer is mason sand. Now mason sand's composition will vary depending where you live. I live in Florida and our mason sand is white and has some shells in it, but it is still washed and cleaned. When I lived in Indiana, our mason sand was brown and would sometimes have fossils in it, but it was still washed and cleaned. The key with mason sand is it's basically all purpose or general purpose sand. If you're still concerned, when you go to order, tell the supplier you want the same thing they use for leveling sand or paver sand or even sandbox sand. All of that is going to be general purpose mason sand and works great for lawns.
All right, so the next thing is, so I've got, I'm set up right here. I'm go, I'm ready. So you guys, right. yeah, okay. Pick your pick your tools. All right, actually, the next thing what we need to do though is we need to mark the spots that we want to level. That way we, because we only have a finite amount of sand here. We we don't have enough to do all of it. So we're going to mark the spots that we want to do. And I recommend you do this too. So just kind of take a walk. Obviously, learn your land. Walk around and mark. Yeah, see, scientific right here. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I think so. Like maybe we go right to here, and then feather it out. So maybe like right to here. So we'll go here. We'll mark because you can see it's higher. You can see it right up through there is higher. So that's the end, and then maybe out through here. So if we mark out here. Right there. I'm really just doing this to add something to the video to make it look like it's technical when it's really not. Okay, there's really no need for this. You can see this plain as day. All right, let's put one more right here. That's yeah, it's probably still low in here too. Right there where it's so let's do that as a secondary markout. That's what this is called. This is called the secondary markout. G14 classified. Okay, the floor is lava. Have you seen that? Is that a real tree? Yeah, why? It's just, it's a struggling palm. <laughs> That's the type. It's a struggling palm. You ever Wait, seen that? It's really called struggling palm? Yeah, it's a struggling palm. <laughs> So right about this time, just as we're getting started, I get a call that one of our freight deliveries, the, the dock is not accepting it. I've got a driver sitting there waiting to unload a truckload of fertilizer. The, the warehouse won't accept it. It's just my phone is just blowing up everywhere. So those guys, to their credit, they just kept on going. They kept on leveling while I was on the phone for quite a while trying to straighten things out. Are you just trying to, maybe we should get a plate compactor. Oh yeah, see, it's just, it's getting worked in. I actually think water is going to be our friend yeah. to work this in. So let's, uh, I'm let's just try some. To figure out how we can get it. Yeah, how deep you want to go with it. Well, let's just see what happens. It's probably going to have to be. It's a, it's it a sizable dip. We water it. Yeah, it's a sizable dip. And then, yeah, you'll, we'll just have to come back over it. Because that's going to be really hard to find, to see how level we have it with this whole stuff. Sand will seek its own level. Free shell. It might take a little more water than this. It might take an actual rainstorm. Oh wait, I gotta pick up this call. Rains per. Hey, I'm trying to get a hold of somebody over there. This zoysia grass is the best grass ever. Really? I disagree. Zoysia grass is a very good grass, but I think that Bermuda grass is the best grass ever. Bermuda grass sucks. You know something? You suck.
There we go. And I don't know if you'd be able to see it on camera, but see now that's flattened out coming this way. You can see how flat it is down there. You're like literally using the water to sculpt it. Look at how flat that is. You can see it, it slopes this way because we want the water to drain, but it's flat. Now I know you get worried. Oh my gosh, where's the grass? It's okay, it's gonna come back through. You'll see, it'll find its way through. There we go, now it's flat. Nice and flat. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This will continue to do this. The more you get rain, the more it'll flatten out. All I'm trying to do is just get everything kind of washed in. Obviously a lot of shells in here, but that is flat. Okay, so, well, I wanted to have a fresh cut, but who knew, even when you have two batteries, you still have to charge them every once in a while, so she died right there, but the Zoe's just looking terrible. Now, it doesn't help that we got, you know, hurricane overflow doing this, you know. One thing you guys will realize is lawns always look better when there's sun on them. That's just in general because they green up. There's like a natural little bit of a green up in a lawn when the sun's on it because it's photosynthesis, you know what I mean? But give you a quick glimpse, this is where I'm at right now. And I'll show you kind of how the progression went. We'll get some close-ups here in a minute, but I'll show you how the progression went of this over the last several weeks. Okay, now, you, one thing you're all wondering is why did I not scalp it? Because typically when you're gonna flatten a lawn, level it, fill in some dents, whatever term you wanna use, you wanna, you wanna scalp the lawn first. And the reason you wanna do that is so then it's encouraged to grow right up through. It, sand's not gonna choke it out. Sand has a larger particle size, so the grass will come up through, and that's really all grass types, but especially warm season grass types, rhizomes, stolons, top growth, boom, they'll just push up right through it. However, I did not want to scalp for one good reason, and I have to take you back to a video I did way back in the spring where I talked about one of the strengths of my zoysia and why I was so scared to scalp it. So yes, you do want to scalp if you need to take it down to that two inches or if you have a thatch problem. Now there's an exception to that, and that will be here in Florida if you're like me. Okay, now the exception to the scalping, and this is with my zoysia, and you can make this decision for yourself, but it would also be with Bermuda too is here in Florida I have invasions of torpedo grass. Now this is actually wild Bermuda here. I'll talk about that in a minute. But I have this invasion of torpedo grass. If you watch my video I did on why I like zoysia last week, I talk about this. The zoysia has been able to keep this torpedo grass out of the lawn. It's only here, it's a terrible example. It's only showing up in the beds here because I believe the, the rhizome mat here is so thick that this stuff can't pop up in here. It, it's keeping going, it's flowing under this stuff. Rhizomes on this can be like 30, 50, 200 feet long probably, but crawls underneath streets, no joke. But I think it's just crawling under the lawn here and then it's coming up in the bed here. It's finding that it's easier to come up through these rocks and through this bed and around the palm tree here and everywhere else. It's finding easier to do that than to come up in the lawn. So my fear is that if I scalp this, I'm actually going to invite the torpedo to come into it and then it's gonna be there forever. So I let this get overgrown. So, uh, so I'll just show you that I was right. There is torpedo grass under all of this. Now you can't see it. This is all pure zoysia. There's no, no uh, torpedo grass anywhere. In fact, there's no weeds in any of it. Now again, it's, you know, it looks a little nasty. That's just because I'm, it's getting scalped from that because I'm not used to using that mower. This and this and that. And so far, I don't actually think that cuts very well. But we'll talk about that later. But uh, but one of the things about zoysia is you'll notice there's no there are no weeds anywhere in this lawn. There are no broadleaf weeds anywhere, and it's been that way ever since I've had this zoysia. 
I, I've like never had to spray it for weeds. I think I did way, way back when it was first getting established, I sprayed it for weeds and I used quinclorac on torpedo grass actually. So let me show you now that my fears have come true. Even that I didn't scalp. By the way, if I would have scalped this whole thing, imagine what it would be. Let me just show you. There it is. I don't know if you can tell. This is one of the areas that I did. There's the torpedo grass. So even though I didn't scalp this, just the idea of flattening the zoysia out and opening this up has allowed the torpedo grass to invade. I mean, you can see it. Look, all in here. That's torpedo grass. It's You can tell the difference in the torpedo, and it's over here too. See right here? That's torpedo grass. But what's funny is, and, it, and again, it's all invaded in here. By the way, this is all the zoysia growing across, filling in, which is nice. But if you come out here, there's absolutely no torpedo grass. Again, color a little funky. I might have put a little too much iron on it too a couple days ago, trying to catch things up. But that's neither here nor there. But just look, there's no torpedo grass anywhere in here. But as soon as you get to where I opened it up, bam, the torpedo grass has taken a hold. And this spot right here, this is really filled in. This was a smaller one, but look, look at all the torpedo grass right there. Looks like the iron burned the torpedo grass too. <laughs> no, it's not burned. It's just uh, when I use the 002 microgreen, it's brown. So if you don't get it watered in fast enough, that's what it does. It makes everything look brown. It'll go away once things start growing. We need sun for that too. The lawn doesn't like to grow when there's no sun. But either way, the, the point here is, is that the torpedo grass invaded even though I didn't scalp it. But imagine if I did like everybody else and just scalp the whole thing and just drug sand all over this, it would probably be who knows? Who knows what the percentage of torpedo grass would have been? But you can see this is really filled in nice. Torpedo grass is helping, but you know, that's uh, just about 30 days, a little over 30 days now. And uh, that zoysia is filling back in. Spreading across. There's some of the original that was tufted in there that was left. And then this is where it's spreading through and spreading across. So that just shows you now it's not completely filled in yet. You know, we still have uh, a little bit of, of thickening to do. And that's part of the other thing that's interesting about these uh, warm season grass types is when they know when they need to put in rhizomes and stolons, they don't put in as much top growth. See, if you look at this spot right here, there's not too much, there's a little bit of top growth, but it's got to thicken itself up like this. So it's really putting in all these stolons like this and it's interweaving itself all in and around because it's it wants to be able to choke. And that's the thing about the zoysia. The zoysia will choke out weeds. And I remember this too, when I was up over by the Chicagoland area, when I worked for True Green, there was a number of lawns that, that were zoysia there. Somebody had sold zoysia plugs, like in the back of the parade magazine. A lot of you guys won't remember what that is, but they called it like miracle grass and they would send you plugs. But it took literally three, four, five years for these plugs to take over. You would just put them in your Kentucky bluegrass lawn. But once they did, these people had this thick lawn. The challenge was that it wouldn't turn green until like the end of May or even early June every year. And then it would go dormant like in the middle of September because it's a warm season turf, but it could handle the winters. But the thing we always noticed about the zoysia lawns was even though they, again, they were brown all the way through to like June 1st, they never got weeds. There was never weeds in them. And that's one of the things about zoysia. It's so thick, it knits together, it knits together so tight that it can keep weeds out. And in my case, I've proven here that it's keeping the torpedo grass out, except when I opened it up and allowed it to come in. So you can see that it is a little darker blue. Those are the areas that I put the uh, X soil in as a soil amendment for that sand. People always ask if I use sand, do I need to amend it? Yeah, you can just X soil works or just if you're using the biostimulants, that'll do it. But you don't have to do that all in one fell swoop. I just felt like dumping some in there because I had it. But now you can also see then that proves the X soil does have nutrients in it, which we knew that because the chickens are pooping on that stuff and uh, chicken poop is full of nutrients. So I went ahead yesterday and sprayed with um, 002 microgreen. And then I also put down some X soil just as a broadcast at 10 pounds per thousand to try to help everything to catch back up. But I think I, but I didn't water in the uh, microgreen. So that's why it's got that brownie look everywhere. But you may not be able to see it on camera. I have no idea. But anyway, that's where we're at. Here's some other broadleaf weed. I don't know what this is, but again, this is an area that we, we leveled. We allowed this to come in and uh, find its way in. Look at that. I have no idea what that is. Lespedeza maybe, but it's that torpedo grass. Just look at that. That's one of the areas. Look at that. Just taking advantage, coming in there. I know I keep saying it, but I'm telling you, there is torpedo grass everywhere underneath this. 
and it just can't make its way through because the zoysia keeps stopping it except when i opened it up and gave it the opportunity one last thing let me show you guys the money shot because i know you're going to want to see if this actually succeeded so here we go where are we at there two same place right two and three quarter let's come over here to the low spot hey look at that two and three quarter over here two maybe two maybe we're even higher in the middle now and then back over here to the edge look at that yeah so we're actually slightly higher here which is what we want nice continuous flow so i was going to mix up some quinclorac and use this new four sun sprayer to hit it but it started raining again and so I'll get that done in the next video because I'm going to have another Zoysia video coming up where I show you another update at my church project Zoysia. I'll also review the four suns. So far, the fit and finish just seems a little suspect, I guess. Anyway. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. I hope you learned a little something here. Uh, I would definitely not recommend that you level your lawn this way, but you can see it did work out for me. Maybe if you were gonna do something similar, you would do it in small bites, you know, kind of trickle the sand in in small amounts over time. But this is how I did it to show you how not to do it. And definitely though, it's showing you why I didn't scalp it, but also showing you how strong the zoysia actually is. If you're somebody that's considering putting in zoysia at your house, you can see that it is definitely a grass that will help your lawn remain weed free all on its own. We talk about the fact that, you know, one of the best defenses against weeds is a thicker lawn. Zoysia proves that point. Now, one thing I did want to do is, if you can't tell, this is a special limited edition Toro hat. This was made for me by the Lawn Tools. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. And by the way, thanks for coming out and hanging out with me, and thanks for helping me with my lawn. They made me not only this one, but they made me some other ones, and I've got five here that I'll give away. If you go to my Facebook page, I'll post this video on Facebook, and I'll link it below. If you go there and you leave a comment on that video, then I'll enter you in a drawing to win one of these five hats. Uh, somebody from our staff will reach out to you. We'll probably do the drawing. I'll do the drawing by Friday, uh, whatever date. I'll put it here. You know, I, all these kind of crazy things you got to do a contest. But just go and leave a comment on the video on Facebook. I'll link it below. And then that way you can get entered in that. Again, we'll have that contest in this next coming Friday. Someone will reach out to the five winners. With that, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. I know this video has been a little bit kind of low energy. You have to understand that it's been raining here straight for like five days. So it's been gray and overcast. And, uh, you know, when you're used to 355 days of sun a year and you get these five day stretches where it's just gray and overcast, it kind of just meh. Kind of like you guys feel in the Midwest when your skies are gray all during the winter. We get spoiled here in Florida, at least I do. And man, we have four or five days and I'm just like, eh. So I do have a little bit of sunlight here right now. The hurricanes are coming. They're not hitting me. They're kind of going out through the Gulf or whatever, but we're getting all of the cloud cover and the rain. We're supposed to have another five or six straight days, days straight of rain. So. I got a little work to do outside, get ready for that, just to make sure things don't flood out. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop rambling now. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn.